It's the final day of section volleyball across Minnesota. Today on CCX, the section 6-3A championship featuring the number three seed, Benilde St. Margaret's, and the number one seed, the Hopkins Royals. From Cooper High School in New Hope, John Jacobson along with Carl Katzenberger. He's the head coach at Minnetonka High School. And Carl, two terrific teams. Hopkins has been here before. They're the two times defending section champions. New experience for the Red Knights, their first section final since the early 2000s. Yeah, I mean, Hopkins is, is, you know, a perennial powerhouse, certainly, in 3A, and they're looking to represent the section for a third time. They're probably the odds-on favorite tonight, but I'm going to tell you what, Benil St. Margaret's is a fantastic season, and, uh, you know, they're just going to let it all hang out for one night and, you know, hopefully capture a, a, a bid to the state tournament. The Red Knights winning their first conference championship in a dozen years, 26 win season, 26-3 and three record. What do they have to do today to win the section title? Well, it, it's going to be kind of a, a strength versus strength situation, and and you know everybody uh, you know you know that's seen Hopkins play understands that that Erickson is kind of their bread and butter, and, and they're going to try to spread the ball amongst other folks and and try to play off your weaknesses of peeing on Erickson. You know, same thing for Benil. Their strength is an outside hitter. You know, uh, Maisie's had a fantastic season, but you know they also have a lot of uh, a lot of, of sneaky good talent, especially in the middle. Um, you know, watch Booth out of the middle to to get some uh, big swings and. And, you know, I, I think it's anybody's ball game, certainly. For Hopkins, they certainly have uh, some new players to their varsity lineup this year, but they've got players who have been here before in section finals and state tournaments, and Anna Erickson, and Jane Nelson, Cheryl Lee. How much does that help them, at all, if at all, today? Well, I think the comfort zone issue plays into it. Uh, Hopkins is kind of battle tested in the section final and you know state tournament games, quite honestly. And Benilde, looking up uh, you know, their last appearance in a section final, you have to go all the way back to 2003 when Ted Fleener was the coach. And you know they, they, it's kind of a heartbreaking story in itself. They were up 2-0 on a Scott Jackson-led Wyzetta team. Wyzetta came all the way back to win in five. Uh, you know, so Benilde has had a little bit of a layoff in this environment, but I mean they're prepared. They're ready to play. Let's look at our key players, starting with the Red Knights. Maisie Jackson, a junior outside hitter. Really a terrific talent for them. Unbelievable leaper, talking to her coaches. Uh, unbelievable leader and unbelievable kid. Like, exactly the person that Benil St. Margaret needs to kind of uh, be, be the glue that holds the team together. And for Hopkins, senior setter Tara Lee, kind of the glue that holds everything together, right? Yeah, I mean, floor general extraordinaire. And, you know, we've been uh, uh, fortunate to, to play against Tara in conference play and, and even section play going back, uh, you know, a few years. But, you know, she's absolutely the consummate professional, I guess, playing that setter position. It'll be a good one today. For Nailman Hopkins, the winner goes to St. Paul next Thursday and the state tournament. Take a break and come back with set one. Benil St. Margaret's Hopkins Volleyball next on CCX. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Jacobson, Kyle Katzenberger back at Cooper High School, ready to go. Section 6-3A final, Benilde St. Margaret's and the Hopkins Royals. One of the most exciting days in volleyball, John. Uh, kids look forward to this all season, working hard this summer, August, September, October, building to the, the section final here. Hopkins, the top seed. Here's how they got here. They defeated eighth seed Burnsville in the quarterfinals in the sweep of Edina in the semifinals. So they have not lost a set yet. But Ilde St. Margaret's, a 3-0 sweep of Washburn, and then lost the first set against Armstrong in the semifinals, came back and won the next three to get to today's match. Hopkins probably the on-paper favorite, but the great thing about it is, is Benilde St. Margaret's is, is had a fantastic season, and they're just going to let it let it rip and you know see if they can qualify for state. Look at the stars: Long, Jackson, Booth, and Sherson for Benilde St. Margaret's, along with Dobus, Faber, and Carr. Hopkins serving Nicole Class. 
will get us underway. We're underway with section championship day in 6-3A. Maisie Jackson off the lead block attempt down for a point in the first point for BSM. Good start for Benil. Not only did they earn the point, they want to establish Jackson on the outside, and they have a lot of uh, leeway if they can establish Jackson to get others involved. Long the junior setter to serve now for BSM. Back row handled by Class. Lee setting across. Cut shot there by Erickson. Handled them down for a kill. And the point for Hopkins. Good heads up play on the right side there. Um, those overpasses are tricky to read. There's the starters for Hopkins. Lee, Nelson, Nyakim Tut, and Class. Along with Anna Erickson, Shadir Tut, and Katie Newman is their libero. Jackson back row. Lee set across, pushed deep by Anna Erickson. Here's the swing and then the block on the attack from Allie Brooks. Tut and Erickson forming a good double block there. Tut just didn't give her body and hands turned back towards zone six. Causes the deflection to go out of bounds. Jackson will serve it with BSM up two to one. There's that double quick they like to run to Erickson. They have the middle uh, hold the middle blocker and then they send the ball quick to Erickson. It's incredibly difficult for the Benil middle to go ahead and, and collapse that block. 2-2 two, two off the Erickson kill with Lee serving. Good line drive serve. Jackson's got to get down to that one but couldn't get a good pass up to the front row. One of those an ace and a point for Hopkins. 3-2 Royals. He'll serve right back to the same place. Long setting left side. And the attack to Hathaway and the kill. You know, she's certainly a wild card. This is her fourth match back after returning from injury for Benilde. So um, any boost that she could provide would be huge for the Red Knights. And a car serving. Lee back set. Crossed by Erickson for another kill. Interesting, both schools might be using the same serving strategy. Both schools accept the, uh, they expect the outsides to do a lot of physical today, and serving them, making them do an extra touch, is, is one way to get them tired out. Long, quick set for Favor, but missed wide on the attack. Sky of Favor, the freshman middle, but missed on that hit, and it's another point for Hopkins. See if Erickson goes after Jackson again here in service receive. It does go right to Maisie Jackson. LaBarrel Carr getting it up to halfway. Tips it over the block and for a point. Five four Hopkins. Anna Sherson, Jr., one of the captains, serving here for BSM. Last swing handled by Carr. The Hathaway. Leal set it outside. Nelson tried to pop it over the net and just didn't get enough on it. This is a rotation for Hopkins is they want to make sure they minimize any long runs for Benilde. Um, you know, they certainly would love a quick side out here to get, get the line moving. 5-5. Five, five. Lee back set. And across a great block by Hathaway and a good dig up by Hopkins. Keep this rally alive. And that one jumped in the open spot. Carol Bulbrick. Well, if Benilde is, is, is showing any nerves, uh, I certainly don't see it quite yet. Um, looks like they're, they're ready to play. 6-5 Benilde now. Pushed deep by Erickson. Carr got a hand on that. Here's Hathaway. Down for another point. Been able to pursue. Yeah, Carr is doing a good job of kind of controlling that side of the court. They're asking their Lero to play left back defense. Um, you know, and once again, you know, Hathaway returning for injury. Whatever she can give today is going to be a huge boon. Lee quick set to the middle as Erickson runs up on it, but a little too strong. It's a back row attack by Hopkins, and I'll explain the rule here. That 10-foot line drawn near the net is, is a boundary that the back row player cannot cross before they jump and attack. Oh, 
Lead a class. Run down by Jackson. Up and over by Carr. Lee sets left side. Class long. Yeah, it's this rotation. Nine to five lead. It's a rotation with Erickson in the back row. Sometimes Hopkins has a hard time keeping the line moving. We'll see if Vanille can take advantage and go on a run. Lee quick set over by Naya Kim Tut. Now push over by Hathaway and Lee will throw it to the back row. Holbrook to the middle. Jackson attack. Got it down. I love Benilde's defense right now. They're committed to taking care of everything easy, medium, okay? And they're just going to let Hopkins have the big rips. They've been doing a fantastic job on anything easy, medium, and then turning in a counterattack. Timeout, Hopkins. 6 0 run for BSM to take the five point lead. Here we, Fong did the match with me the other night, the Section 5 final. And St. Michael Alberville had a problem in that fifth set where they couldn't get out of a rotation. And Champlin Park built, came back actually, and, and built the lead and ended up winning it. That's kind of the situation, obviously, early in the first set here, but that Hopkins is in right now. If Hopkins has any weaknesses, and they're a fantastic team, it's, it's when they get Erickson in the back row and they can't keep the line moving, they can't rotate her back to the front row. Benilde, to take advantage of that, um, you know, they, they, they serve tough and, and they play great defense. And, you know, the longer they can go on a service run, the more time of the actual match that Erickson spends in the back row. This is basically a best case scenario start for Benilde right now. One state tournament appearance for this school in volleyball came back in 1983. That's a lot of time in between state tournament appearances. Um, you know, my hope is that both teams play their best, and we just have a fantastic finish to this match. Hopkins, six state tournament appearances, including the last two years in Class 3A out of Section 6. So look at their head coaches for today. It serves is in for an ace. Yeah, that pressure thing can, can work both ways. We talked about it earlier, John, is, is Hopkins may be the on-paper favorite, but that gives Benilde license to just let it rip. Anna Scherzer to serve very well in this rotation, gets it down to make it 11-5. Back set, Nelson across. Bolbrecht, Jackson attacking, and this time off the tape, but out of play. Not touched by Hopkins, and the Royals finally get a point. That's a good run for Benil. That's what they need to do is they need to pressure Hopkins when Erickson's in the back row. Left side, hit a cross and down for a point. And the kill for Hathaway. I love Benil's poise right now too, is every touch just looks like a, an everyday occurrence. This is not a, a particularly, you know, high pressure match for them. They're just playing like it's, it's a practice or a regular conference match right now. Good dig up on that ball by Erickson. Ball at the net. Faber able to play. And then Faber able to push it past Tep Tottenham. But I think she was in the net, or one of the players was in the net for Benel. A little contact with the net from the, the body here on the way down. Uh, you can barely see the net move, but uh, it's a good call. Ball break up in the air. Jackson. Out of the cross, nice dig on that ball by Newman. Quick set for Favor, gets sent back at her. Erickson scrambles but gets it across. Lee set. Sadir Tut gets blocked. Jackson Favor gets a hand on it. Tut again with the attack. That's dug up. They go to Erickson left side and miss her. Jackson left side rather. And she misses on the attack for Benilde and a point for Hopkins. Great rally there, a lot of good individual plays, a lot of good heads up plays there. Nelson serves. A ball at the net, Lee wins that battle and they get the point. Benil did something really well in the early stages of this game is, is they, they had a great first contact. They're struggling a little bit in first contact right now. Nelson, good serve. Jackson up in the air. Volbrecht will set it back to Maisie Jackson and down another point. 
There Jackson helps herself by having a fantastic first contact, makes a setter's job easy, delivers a very nice hittable ball. And then Jackson being the athlete she is, it elevates and, and puts it away. Caitlin Fox in, she will serve here for BSM. The team leading this first set by four. Shadir Tut powering it off the tape and down. Small seam in the vanilla block. It's, it's tough to take care of that, that quick tempo attack if, if you're not committed to getting two kids four hands in front of it. You see the seam there, and uh, Tut's able to put it away. Nicole Class floating it over. Great dig, but went out of bounds off of Sherson's hand. Nice effort to get the hand under it, but couldn't keep it in play. So an ace for Class. Point for Hopkins, they're back to within two. And they trailed by six, and now right back in it. Jackson across, pushed over by Cotton down for a point. Yeah, th this, is a, this is a battle of runs, and we talked about it, John. The sustained runs are, are going to be key to this game. Um, that's a good athletic play by Todd at the net. Uh, you know, great awareness and, and good job finding the empty court. Another good serve by Klaus. Set to Jackson. Got it down for a point. Great shot by Jackson. She's trading pace for location there. In, instead of going max pace, she decides just to deliver the ball in the corner. Incredibly difficult area to defend for Hopkins. 325 kills on the season coming into section play for Maisie Jackson. Long serving. At the net, tipped over by Lee. Yeah, it's imperative for Hopkins uh, to have a third attacker, especially when, when Lee is in the, the front row there. And you know, she's such a good athlete and so aware of, of where the open court is at all times. Here she just sees it over her right shoulder and, and just puts the ball away. Incredibly hard to defend. Here's Jackson off the tape, but out. Point for Hopkins. He's, they have tied it up. Fongs are probably just talking to his team right now about, you know, just let's get relaxed on first contact. Let's do ourselves a favor and make that first one as good as we can. Long outside, Jackson again. Cuts it in for a point. 15-14, Benilde. Very athletic play. Ball was set a little bit tight, and she reaches out, and gets that thumb down cross court. Superb. Last point ending a 9-3 Hopkins run. Lee outside. Erickson's ball handled by Carr. Jackson will run up, push it across. Lee, left side, they go to Erickson again. Big by Carr. On and over. Half the way, it's off. The netting that hangs down below will get a wall and then a net that hangs below it. The ball's in play, you can play it off it, but you never know, you can't expect that carom, so it takes a little bit of an odd carom here for Hopkins and they couldn't quite recover. Long tip over by Hathaway, nice layout by Nelson, but they get the play at the net and the point. Heads up blocking there by Benil, they recognize that, that tip coverage put the ball a little tighter than net than, than Lee would like. Heads up play, get four hands across the net on the volleyball here. Well done. Three in a row for BSM now. Jackson on serve. Outside, Erickson gets blocked, but it's down on the Benilde side of the net and a point for Hopkins. Just so strong on the pin there, Erickson. She's able to elevate and then, you know, she's able to see what her options are. Lee serving. Going to the middle, and boof. Hard to boof, we haven't talked about her yet. Six foot seven inch, eighth grader. Gets the kill there. Yeah, they're gonna use her in favorable situations, and that's one of them. The ball's not passed exactly in system, off the net a little bit, and then, you know, they're able to sneak booth in there for uh, a, a play with little to no block. Erickson, and there's quite a couple of diving attempts by the Red Knights. The Royals get the kill. Great run by Hopkins. Benilde can do a great job of passing, especially now with Erickson in the back row. There's Hathaway. 
Dug up by Newman, attack from the middle by Erickson. Now Jackson will try to flip one over, but not quite enough on that ball. And point for Hopkins. Finesse is part of her game in the front row. It's just so hard in the back row to hit finesse shots because, you know, you're 10 plus feet off the net and you don't really have a great idea where you are in relationship to the net. Here's Erickson serving. To the middle over by Favor. And again, Benil not quite in system. The pass is just slightly off the net, but the setter does a great job in, in leading that middle. Favor does a good job of taking advantage of the situation. It's just pure one-on-one -on -one here, okay? One-on-one -on -one for any hitter is, is a fantastic outcome. 1917 Benil, they've led most of this set. Erickson attack. Gets the Royals back to within one. Super athletic play. Erickson sees the open court to her right. She's actually moving right to left, and she has the athleticism to go ahead and turn that ball back towards the right side of the court for Benil. Royals back to within one, and that is out of play. It goes an eight serve. At this point, you're probably talking to Benilde uh, in the next dead ball about how do you control the nerves on the first contact. Tied at 19, Favor gets it over. Fantastic job there by Favor. She jumped really well and the block just wasn't quite well formed. She took advantage of the late left side and was able to find uh, you know, that, that high hand challenge for the point. 20 to 19. Double serves. And a cross, but too strong by Nelson. Vanille can stay on top here uh, and keep Erickson in the back row, actually win the game here. That would be the best case scenario. If Hopkins can get Erickson back to the front row, I think that certainly favors Hopkins in a tight game here. Shadir Tut gets them the side out. Another one-on-one -on -one situation. Lee does a great job of seeing that. Finds Tut. Tut gets one-on-one -on -one and, and unloads on the ball. Fantastic. 120. Nelson though gives one back. Booth comes back in, and, and this is this is the key situation here. One more rotation for Hopkins, and Erickson comes back to the front row. If they could get to 24. Um, and then all they'd have to do is pass, you know, make sure that, that they have a chance to win where they control their own destiny. Um, time out by Hopkins here, and, and I'm sure Hopkins is going to talk uh, about how to, what the best play is, just to immediately side out, then get Erickson back in the front row and, and feel like they're playing with their ideal lineup. State tournament starts Thursday at XL Energy Center in St. Paul. Class 3 eight teams will play. The early matches, either 9 or 11 a.m. Seating will take place Sunday morning between the uh, coaches of the teams that qualify. Always fun, Always fun to go down to the X and uh, watch the tournament play. Class A, Class AA, Class 3A, it doesn't matter how big the schools are. The, the level of play is fantastic. And you know, it's, it's, it's a goal that the kids work towards, the coaches work towards all season long. And, um, you know, what an experience for, for all the teams to, to go down there and, and, and play in that tournament. Fong Long, his fifth year as head coach, and really done a nice job with this uh, program as I'm on the verge of the state tournament. Got it in the conference championship this year. Certainly has talent, but uh, a lot of good coaching is going in to this program as well. See if Hopkins can get this first contact tight to the net. Then Lee has the uh, uh, opportunity to just go ahead and turn and be an attacker herself. Touch with another big swing from the middle. To the ear tuck. A couple of big points late here for Hopkins. Yeah, nice. good ball handling by Hopkins. It allows them to use the middle. And Tut's a really good leaper. I mean, my goodness. Great job with her approach and able to put the ball away. Here's class serving. Well, it's a back row. A little miscommunication. Who's going to take that ball? Comes to Jackson. The Lee gets the block on her. And we're tied up. First contact issues again for Benil that, that caused a little bit of a scramble play because the primary setter is not handling the second ball. Set goes a little tight and a little wide. And... Class serves, Carr, halfway over by Booth. Long will set it for Jackson, gets blocked. 
Todd and Lee getting up the they, block. They had, that, they had that play sniffed out. Lee and Tut were committed to the outside. They're leaving Erickson one-on-one -on -one with the middle. Fantastic blocking assignment there by Hopkins. 23-22, class floating the serve. And Jackson handled by Newman front row. Quick set. Back row on the Erickson attack, handled by BSM. Here's Jackson running up, pushes it too far. And a now set point for Hopkins. Benil will take time out. I think this is where the playoff experience issue comes into play, is, is Hopkins calls a timeout down, and then they get an immediate response. They kind of get control of their motions, kind of get control of their bodies, and, and you know, they just, it's kind of business as usual. Uh, Benilde, they look fantastic, loose, ready to play in the first part of the game, and you know, I, I think the level of play has tightened up significantly on this side of the net. I'd like to see them come out of the timeout with a, with a gigantic smile on their faces and kind of get their body language at ease before they play this final stretch of the game. Good crowd tonight for, for a section final. We got we got pretty good student sections for both schools behind us. Hopkins band here, and, and then you know we got we got a sea of red on the bleachers looking straight ahead from us, and then a sea of blue on the left side from the bleachers straight ahead of us. Fun day if you're a fan of high school volleyball. You can go around the, the metro and around the state, to be honest, and, and watch different section finals. You look at Vicky Swens now, our 23rd year as head coach. Yeah, consistently a, a strong program in the metro and the state. Unbelievable, yeah, to, to be in, in control of the program for 23 seasons. Go so out of the timeout, Benilde. Zero margin for error here. Erickson long. 24 23. That's a gutsy play by the middle back to, to, to read that as out. Um, you know, she made a fantastic call though. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's something that, that coaches, you know, always kind of have their fingers crossed that your player is going to make the correct read in that situation. On the server team trailing by one, still set point for Hopkins. Oh, no, uh, service error gives set one to the Royals. 25 23. So we. Expected a close match. We got one so far. Hopkins wins, though. They rally. Win it by two. Well, I feel bad for, for any player um, that, that is trying to be aggressive and trying to make for, play for their team. And, you know, the ball was out by, by a matter of inches. I would say number one is, is that player needs to be reminded by teammates and coaches, listen, this is a, this is a totality of, of, of our play because you touched the ball last in the rally and it, that, that certainly does not put the burden of the loss on right. you. Yeah, it's, it's a team game. And if her teammates and coaches uh, can pick her up in that respect and just get her to understand that because you touched the ball last, that certainly it has no more fault on, on you than any, any other aspects of our play. Um, I think Benilde should be encouraged overall, though. It's a, it's a strong Hopkins team. And, you know, quite honestly, it was anybody's game right at the end game. And, and we talk about that as being one of the keys. When it gets into the 20s, who's going to be able to execute a little bit better? And, you know, I just thought Hopkins maybe deserved to win the game based on their poise and ability to exec uh, execute there at the stretch. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. Set two. Hopkins, Benilde St. Margaret's Volleyball continuing on CCX after this. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Oh, 
Hopkins pep band is fired up. Their team leading one set to none here against Benilde St. Margaret's in the Section 6 final. Real tight game, real well played. Uh, there's some sections that both teams wish they probably had back. Came down to the, to the final stretch there, and, and Hopkins was able to kind of stick with their game plan. Okay, defend, get Erickson the ball uh, at, at crunch time. I, I will say this is Tara Lee showed pretty good leadership. She was not afraid to use Tut out of the middle in, in a big situation there. And, and to Tut's credit, she was ready to, to get set. She was you know looking for the ball and wanting to make a play for her team there. about how blessed Hopkins has been with setters the last, what, six, eight years now with uh, Samantha, Selliger Swenson, and Tara Lee back to back. What a, what a luxury to have that kind of continuity at that position. Always know you're going to have a tremendous athlete, tremendous kid, tremendous leader, uh, kind of, you know, being the, the field runner out there. It's fantastic. Uh, Vicky has is, still has the twins in in her household. Right. They they are in seventh grade seventh next grade fall. Already. Yeah, wow. next fall. Yeah. And like that's the first year they're eligible to play high school volleyball in the Hopkins school district. So Samantha played high, uh, varsity volleyball as a seventh grader. I don't know what timeline the twins are on, but I mean you talk about continuity and, and you know th there's a couple more players that Hopkins will be counting on in, in the future. Swing and attack by. Eric Sims, we are underway here in set two. Jackson missed. Caught the tape and no one got a hand on him for Hopkins. And first point of the set goes to the Royals. Like Jackson to continue to be aggressive. Um, I, I feel like that uh, the, they backed off the gas pedal a little bit on the aggression and if they could return to that. That would be their best chance here. Long back to Booth, got it down. It's a great swing by Booth. She's basically using the block for the net. A lot of kids like to hit the ball straight down. Unfortunately, when, when you're 6'7", uh, if, if you hit the ball down, it brings the block into play. Great job of hitting the ball deep in the court and taking the block out of it. Strong serving. Here's Lee outside. It's Erickson dug up by Carr. Outside attack, Jackson gets blocked. Go to Maisie Jackson again off the blockers. The Royals keep it alive. Erickson over. Long will set Maisie Jackson one more time over the blockers. And a great dig on that ball by Erickson. He gets to another one. Lee will set it for Erickson. Wow. Kind of Erickson all over the court. Of those. Last three plays, and she gets the kill that ends it. Very athletic. Probably the most athletic of the, the plays is, is there's not very many kids in the state can do that. Take that tight set and still elevate and get something on it. Fantastic play by Erickson. Katie Newman, the senior libero. Service error makes it 2-2. So far, you know, Benild, it looks like they've been able to put the result of game one behind them. I, I like the body language so far. They're communicating well with each other, and, you know, hopefully they, they can just compartmentalize that and just go forward and play their best volleyball. 2-2 with Jensen serving. Well to Dover. Nelson lays out for that ball. Over by Class. Long going to be called for a double contact. That rule change several years ago allowed for a, a uh, not a clean handle of the ball in first contact. On second and third, though, that ball has to be met in one continuous contact. There, the setter had the ball go from one hand to the other, thus the violation. Well, Hopkins not doing themselves many favors right no. now in the serving game. Two um, service errors yeah, early. Absolutely. I wonder if that's an issue of over-aggression, if they're trying to be a little too aggressive when they're serving right now. Um, I, I certainly am not privy to the game plan on, on service for Hopkins, but you know it's, it's really easy to get amped up in the section final, want to make a great play for your team, and, and maybe just play a little over-aggressively. We're at 3-3. Three, three. A great serve by Fox. Great serve, and there's that serving strategy again. They want to make Erickson move. They're anticipating a long match. Let's get Erickson moving for, for service seed balls, then forcing her to transition and hit. Even if she digs this ball, she's not going to be in a position to go ahead and, and transition and hit. Serve to Erickson. Lee will set up and went over. Tunt, but Nelson there to play it on the backside. And a block. Tut getting up with Erickson. 
A great read, well set by, by Lee on the outside, and then Tut did a great job of closing the block, getting those hands across the net. Nia Kim Tut, the older of the two Tut sisters there, number six. Yeah, this one floats and goes long off the attack from Allie Brooks. Now to the casual observer, that could look like a, a, a really errant shot. Brooks understands that Tut is very physical, and she's trying to go high hands there, trying to use the block in order to score. Favor gets up and pounds one down for the Red Knights. Great shot by Favor. Um, she understands that you know Tut can't take away everything with the block, even as physical as she is. Did a great job of maneuvering the ball there to, to find the open area and uh, you know, score the point for Benil. 5-5, five, five, Sherson serves into the net. Yeah, that, that's a tough time to, to miss a serve. Certainly there is, you don't want to let Erickson rotate without having Hopkins earn the point. Just to miss a serve with her in the back row, is, is that's kind of a big deal. And that was the rotation. They scored a lot of points in set one. Absolutely. With serving. Yep, their, their runs came when Erickson was in the back row, and it's, it's so tough to rotate Hopkins without having them earn the point, earn the chance to rotate. Service here by Hopkins here, though, gives it right back to BSM at 6-6. Back set to Nelson, attack dug up by Carr. Here's Jackson over, and he gets down for a point. Yeah, Jackson, great aggressive play there. Really like to see her be aggressive on third contact the, the rest of the night. And, and she understands the offensive burden she has to carry. Really like to see her continue to be aggressive. Serve along. Dobos sends it out of play and this point for Hopkins and Jane Nelson. One more time, you know, people are gonna make mistakes in volleyball to, to rotate Hopkins there with the misserve. That's, that's just a, a tough deal. For, for Benilde fans. Way to the middle, attack by Erickson, dug up by Carr. Along to Jackson. Didn't get that over. Man, it's 8-7. Ball set a little tight there, and she has limited options when, when Hopkins presents a, a, a well-formed block there. Nelson serves, drops in for an ace. That's a tough ball to read for, for any serve receive player, and it's um, you know cer certainly a lot to ask of the serve receive players to account for that ball off the tape. Here's Jackson, caused by Erickson, and Nelson too far to run after the ball played by Newman, and the point for BSM. It's a great shot there. One more time, trading pace for location. She finds this ball into deep zone five. Really hard for Hopkins to defend that. Our floats are served. Lee for class and down for a point. Boy, I thought the, the attack hit the antenna. Um, maybe we can get a replay oh, yeah. here. It really felt like the attack hit the antenna. Here it comes. Well, it's tough to see from that angle, but I, I really felt the attack hit the antenna. The second referee is conversing with the first referee right now. Um, we'll, we'll see what the call what the call is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it was such a such a minuscule movement of the antenna. I really feel like the the attack hit the antenna though. And Benilde immediately calling for it on the floor. Here it is. Let's see if you can see it. There it there. is, right oh, there. Definitely. Yep, I, I really feel like the ball hit the antenna. Uh, replay would agree with us, but in real time, that's a that's a really hard ball to call, especially because the antenna just moved once. It didn't continue to kind of wiggle as as the play went on. And a tough one for Benil. They looked like they. Should have had that point, instead it goes to Hopkins, and it's 10-8. Let's file that one away for later on in this match. You hear Tut, nice dig on the ball. Erickson pounds a nice play by Wolbert in the back row to dig that ball up. Or by Scherson, rather. This one over. Royals keep it alive over by Long. 
Great shot by the right side there. Again, heads up play. The ball comes back over tight. It's an overpass situation. Split second decision has to be made. Am I going to hit the ball or am I going to play the ball? Uh, great decision by the setter. Who says setters can't play offense, huh? Big point for BSM. Makes it 10-9 as Carr serves. And this will be an ace. It's a good aggressive serve there by Benil. Uh, really, really like to see them stay aggressive. Uh, both in, in third contact and the service game. High to 10 here in set two. Long setting outside, big swing, but too strong. By Jackson, point for Hopkins. All errors are not created equal, and that time Jackson stays aggressive and hits the ball. The, the ball into the block and the net, there's no chance for Benil to win that point. The, the ball that sails uh, just slightly out like that, there, there's a lot of outcomes where Benil can win the point. The block can touch it. The, the block can touch the net. Uh, the block can go under the net. A defender can touch it. Uh, a, you know, a referee can, can call the ball in or out incorrectly. So all errors not created equally. It is okay to make hitting errors. When, when we're talking to kids, especially middle school players, the, the best way to kind of prepare yourself to be a, an aggressive hitter is, is to, to make errors, but make errors into the opposing team's court. Uh, it, that gives you a chance to win, whereas making errors into the net or into the block does, does not allow your team to, to, to succeed there. Look at that last point again. I don't know what the conversation is here. Perhaps Benil thinks that there, there was a block touch here. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what the conversation is about. I, I know both captains have been back and forth to the, to the first referee stand communicating. The down ref has actually come over and communicated as well. Looks like there's a substitution issue and, and not a block touch issue is kind of the culprit here. Brooks back out on the floor in place of Scherson. Yeah, it looks like that maybe we, we just got out of service rotation order somewhere along in the match, and the down ref has caught it, and they're, and they're just trying to get it corrected. Um, this is Benild's last rotation uh, with Jackson in the front row, it looks like. Um, you know, they're, they're going to obviously look to her to, 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 to rotate here, side out immediately. Then Benil, you know, certainly has to do a great job of continuing to be aggressive um, and, and try to get her back around the front row without a ton of damage being done by, by Hopkins. Do you have a most memorable section final game, John, what? in 27 years of broadcasting? Two nights ago has got to be right up there. And actually the last... Three Section 5 finals I have done have been outstanding, all involving Champlin Park. Two years against Wyzetta, five-set thrillers up at Anoka High School. This year, Champlin Park and St. Michael. Uh, years ago in Osseo, Armstrong had a couple of great section matches when Marcy Pinata was at Armstrong, Kelly Bowman was Osseo, and they were going one-on-one -on -one and two outstanding players. And those would be in my uh, top five. Here's a fun fact is my wife played on those Armstrong State Championship teams. Uh, with Marcy and, and Tara Lobdell. Uh, yeah, like the, that was a fantastic volleyball team. Yeah. They won a couple of state championships in the early 2000s. One of those teams was unbeaten. Yeah, yeah, Bowman versus Pinata. That, that was the, the premier matchup back in, back in those days. So it's 11 to 10. Benil trailing but serving here. Here's Lee. He'll set it outside on Erickson. Dug up by Jackson. Back row. For the Jackson again. Swings long and then point Hopkins. Good aggressive shot. I'd hate for Jackson to, to kind of get timid or, or go away from that. They're going to need her to, to play aggressively for the remainder of the match. Here's Carl swinging across. Lee back set for Jane Nelson. Nelson does a great job. Lee does a fantastic job. Recognizing the right side is, is going to have one-on-one. -on -one. Holds her position very neutral before she sets. And then the well -form, or sorry, the poorly formed block is caused by all the attention that Erickson gets on the outside. The middle has to pick her poison, so to speak. And, and there she just guessed wrong. I think Nelson does a nice job playing off of Erickson when teams are kind of shading 
on his way that she gets uh, the other set sometimes and is able to do well with it most of the time. One of the biggest traits we look for in players at, at Minnetonka High School is, is unselfish play. And, and I think that's a case where she doesn't care if she fills up the stat sheet. She doesn't care if she gets set in, in, in crucial times. She just wants to help the team and she trusts her teammates to, to get her the ball you know, in places where she can succeed. And that, that to me, that's behavior, that's understanding of the team is way more important than any individual goals. I, I feel like that that's a big part of Hopkins' success too. Is, is is Vicky does a great job of communicating that as as a a, a absolute must to, to be at the Hopkins uh, you know varsity volleyball team. You, you have to let go of some personal goals and, and make sure that the team is number one. Been able to open that timeout ends a little bit of the momentum for Hopkins. Red Knights scrambling there on. Serve received. Nelson will push it over, up in the air and over by Carr. And Leal set it outside for Erickson. Gets blocked back. Great dig on that ball by, by Katie Newman. Now here's Long in the middle for Booth. Dug up by Lee. Class lays out for it. Good long rally here. Long again for Booth for the point for Benil. That was a big one for the Red Knights to make it 13 11 instead of. A 14-10 Hopkins lead. Great high swing by Booth. I, I really like the, that she's sticking with the game plan. Tut's a very physical blocker. She's hitting deep into their court right now instead of trying to pull the ball down. Fox in and serves it over. Handled by Erickson. Gets it back from Lee. Yeah, that, that's part of the chance you take with that serving strategy is trying to do, to go after Erickson. She's a great first ball, uh, you know, player. She does an excellent job in serve receive, and he, that, that's the chance you take is you, you serve to Erickson. She has a very good chance of putting that ball right where it needs to be. Car to the front row, long and hand on it by Favor to get it across. Lead to the middle over by Erickson. A dig by Jackson. She'll get it back from Carr. Now it's Lee, quick set, and double contact called on Lee. Yeah, ball mishandled a little bit. This is a this is a very key time in the match for, for Benil. They've got Erickson in the back row, and they, they basically kind of have to, to make their profit right now. Let's see if, if uh, they can remain aggressive. I, this is a big opportunity for Sophie Hathaway to, to get rotated one more time and then get Maisie Jackson back in the front row for, for Benil. Sherson serving. Back set. Nelson off of Sherson. Jay Nelson, another attack and kill. The senior. It's a tough read for Sherson right there on, on that hard driven ball. She's playing right back defense. She's a little bit off the edge. It's so hard to gauge if that hard driven ball is going to be in or out. Ball set outside. Hathaway. The big point for Benilde. Great job by Hathaway, and th that accomplishes a couple things. And most importantly, gets you know Benil the point there. Also rotates Jackson back to the front row in in a in a period where Erickson is in the back row for Hopkins. It's an interesting lineup switch made by by Coach uh, Fong here. Double serves, tough one, and off of Erickson and out. An ace for Sophie Dobos. They are committed to going after Erickson out uh, of serve receive. Um, you know, I like it. I like sticking to the game plan regardless of, of, of the outcome right now. This time will be handled by Newman. Lee's got a scramble to it. Over by Class gets blocked. Over by Favor and down. What a set and what a cover by Tara Lee there. She does an excellent job on the run, bump setting the ball to the outside, and then she gets stopped and makes a dynamite cover for Hopkins. Lee will dump it over, but Carr's ready for it. To the middle, Favor with another kill. This is critical for Benilde right now. I, I love their, their, their attitude. I love their body language. It looks a lot different than the end of game one. If they can make some money with Erickson in the back row right now, it sets him up for, for another great shot at it in the end game. Pushed across by Erickson. Well, the ending of the point to Benilde, another double contact call. 
Yeah, another ball handling error there. Um, you, you, you know, it's it's just part of the game. You know, kids are trying to play aggressively, shove balls over with their hands. It, 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 it happens. Timeout here by Vicki uh, Swenson. And, you know, I know part of the conversation right now is you were in this exact same situation in game one. We, we got behind by a couple, and, and it, it just looked like the, they, they got out of uh, playing the, the way that they like to. Looks like Benilde is forcing Hopkins to, to kind of play in their style, and Hopkins has forgotten, you know, to a certain extent what makes them successful. And that's, that's great first contact. Uh, you can count on Lee for a great second contact, especially if that first one is, is right on top of her. And then, you know, great decision by Lee with the second one and then aggressive play by Hopkins on the third. Unfortunately, uh, Benilda has been doing just enough and serving aggressively and attacking aggressively. They haven't done a, as good of a job as they'd like to uh, on the Hopkins side of the net in first contact. Lee is going to ha uh, having to make some scramble plays and, and you saw there we got, we got a ball to Erickson on the back row slightly outside of her hitting window where she likes the ball. She's forced to stay on the ground and push the ball over, uh, cause the double contact error and, and uh, you know we have a lot of momentum going right now for the for the Red Knights. On a run here, have been able to open up a two-point lead. Steph Mason uh, really doing a good job of, of pumping up uh, the setter right there. Um, you know, stay positive, stay positive, which that's that's certainly at least part of the message. Back row handled by Sherson. The favor missed here. It's a great run. It's a, it's a good idea to, to try to run quick there. Again, uh, uh, all mistakes are not created equally. I feel like uh, you know that shot to the back corner uh, is exactly kind of in the playbook for Benil as part of their success. Jackson, it's the kill. Yeah, Hopkins didn't quite get the, the block sealed, didn't get all four hands across. The ball trickled basically between the blocking hands and the net. Car serving, Benil back up by two. Hit over by Erickson. Long quick set for Booth. Class to Lee, back to class. And that's down. Fortunate, uh, fortunate timing there for, for uh, Hopkins. We, we, we get uh, Erickson back to the front row right now and, and, and let's see if they can kind of stem the tide of the, this Benil run. Swing and an attack from Jackson, handled by the Royals. Here is Erickson, dug up by Sherson. Jackson backs up on that ball, gets it across. Lee jumps it across. Oh, a couple of great handles on the ball. First car and then Sherson, but they couldn't get it over. And Lee ends up. Yeah, I, I, I really like the Libro for, for Benilde right now. She is basically keying on, on Tara Lee in the second contact. She's not going to allow Tara to, to go ahead and attack on the second contact. Tied at 18. Lee, a long run to this ball. Getting up for Erickson for another kill. What a set by Lee again. Full sprint coming towards Erickson. Platform out. Make sure that ball goes straight up and down. It's so easy for a setter to push that ball past the pin when they're running forward full speed like that. Class serves. Here's a long. With Jackson over and off of Newman out. Jackson answers, what a great shot. Aggressive cross court. Um, you know, what, what can I say is, is you know, that, that's what Benil's going to have to do to, to kind of crawl, uh, you know, back into a, a position uh, where, where, where they have a, a, a comfort zone about winning the match right now. They got to get that confidence back, that, that smile on their face that they had in, in the first set. Kind of 19. Long serving, ball to the net, and the easy play for Carter Booth. Yeah, that's good coaching, and and you know it's so tempting as a middle to want to try to hit that ball straight down. There's a there's there's a lot of bad outcomes that can come out of that, and you know easy play like you said, put two hands on the volleyball, direct the ball to the open court. BSM back up by a point. Long, good serve, handled by Newman. Lee will set it for Erickson. Handled back row by Dobos. Over by Carr here. Nelson runs up on that ball. Here's Erickson. Walking back at him. Lee jumps it down for a kill. 
It's a really good shot by Lee, and, and you'll, you'll notice the Benoit Libro again is, is all over that. And you know, it's kind of like the in football where the the linebacker will spy on the quarterback, just make sure that that you know they understand what the quarterback's doing at all times. Seems like Benoit's defensive assignment for the Libro is to spy on Tara Lee when she's in the front row. Booth answers with a huge swing for Benel. My goodness, what a great run there. Booth, uh, you know, she, she's she's going to play aggressively when it's her chance to, to, to swing right there. And, you know, what a fantastic shot. Jackson got it to the back row. Here's Lee up to Erickson. And going to get it over. Long did, but missed. Good effort, but point goes to Hopkins. Great scramble play to even get the ball back over the net. Unfortunately, j just a, a couple feet out there. We are tied at 21. Oh, wow. serve on by Lee. Uncharacteristic kind of mistake there for Tara Lee. Certainly want to play aggressively. And that, that ball, you know, was not, not a, you know, basically a, a one that the service seed player had to make a tough read on. Fox serves. Here's Nelson. And point for Hopkins. Okay, 22-22. This is a situation for Benoit St. Margaret's right now is they've got Erickson in the back row. And, you know, basically they're going to have a chance to win it if they can ball handle, make that first contact great, and then be aggressive on third. Erickson serving. Back row off of Jackson. A little hesitation. Do we let that go? Do we play it? Goes off of Jackson and out, and an ace for Erickson and a timeout for Beneld. Yeah, in a situation where you don't know, you, you know, you do want the players to play aggressively. I, I feel like that ball was headed out almost certainly. And you, you can't fault you can't fault Jackson there. She wants to make a play for her team. She wants to play aggressively. I would much rather that error occur than a ball to land in and, and a mistake of inaction where Jackson didn't want to play the volleyball in, in that situation. Well, this is a this is kind of the same end game story we had in, in game one, and it's who's going to play better in these final few points. Um, once again, Hopkins has Erickson in the back row setting. Jackson is in the back row for Benil, but she will rotate to the front row uh, almost immediately if if, if Benil can figure out a way to get, get a side out or two here in, in the end game. Um, the, the play for for Benil right now, what I would assume, is they're going to key off the middle if they have a good first contact going to the setter they're either going to run middle or they're going to the key off the middle is try to run something quick to the outside where the, the block has to make a decision you know pick my poison right now am i going to honor the middle or i'm going to go get outside to the pin erickson set the server team leading one set to none and up 23 22 late here in set two and Crucial points here if you're Benil. You don't want to go down 0-2 and by a favor ties it back up. Great shot by Favor is there again. Benil wanting to run the middle in system. Um, you know, she did a fantastic job of finding open court there. Um, let's see if, if Benil can serve tough here on 23-23. Sherson serves. To the middle, the attack from the back row by Erickson. And the Royals get the point, and it's set point now. It's a good aggressive shot by Erickson on the back row there, and you know aggression is important, especially late in games like this. I I, I like the fact that Erickson was, was not afraid to swing there, try to put the pressure back on Benil. The Royals will try to close it out here. Back row off Jackson to the half the way. It's got to be over by Jackson and his. Lee will set outside class. Get a knock right back at her. That's the problem with that tight set is, is the outside has very few options. Credit the Benil St. Margaret's block right there. Getting all four hands over the net. She's basically in an impossible situation as a hitter right there. Fantastic play. 24-24. Well, that didn't look like it was going to get back over by Benil in the first place, and they able to come up and tie it up. Oh, a service error. Makes wow. it 25-24. You have to win by two when you get to this point, so 
set not over yet, but now it is set point for the Royals again with Nelson serving. Good line drive serve. Carr handled it though. Long will set it for Jackson. Good dig by Newman. Here's Lee to the middle. Shadir Tut. Carr handles that over by Jackson. Lee to class. Floats it over and is set point. Lots of credit to Hopkins right there as they felt like they stayed aggressive. They're in a in a tough situation being down one late. You know, one more time, maybe that that battle tested, uh, you know, experience in, in, in a section final and, and state tournament. A lot of these kids have appeared, you know, in, in matches in both the section final and state tournament. Maybe maybe that's just the minuscule difference between the two teams right now is, is Hopkins playing a little bit more poised uh, in, in crunch time than Benilti and Margaret's is. So Hopkins goes up 2-0. We'll take time out and come back. More Section 6-3A Volleyball from Cooper on CCX in a moment. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Night fans out supporting their team, looking for a rally here, starting with Semp 3. Now uh, you have coached long enough, you've seen 0-2 doesn't mean 0-3, right? Yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. You, you play till they tell you to stop. I, this is far from being critical of the referees, by the way, because I thought they've done an outstanding job in controlling this match. We filed away that point in the early stages of game two where, where it really appeared like the Hopkins attack hit the antenna and we thought, okay, I hope that doesn't play into the outcome of the match. You know, in a tight game like that, you never know how that momentum could have shifted or, you know, if, if there would have been a different outcome. I mean, that, that's just a, one of those things that makes refereeing so hard real time. And, you know, quite honestly, I, I, I give referees a lot of credit because the vast majority of the time in, in real time, they get the call absolutely correct. They did everything right in that situation, too. They conferred. Um, you know, I, I felt like they, they did everything that they need to do to, to, to be fair as referees there. So we're underway here with set three. Carter Booth attacks and gets the kill to get PSM off to a good start. Yeah, what a, what a shot in the arm there is to, to get a big swing by Booth right away. Let's, let's see if maybe Benil kind of goes to her a little bit more as, as this match progresses. 
1-0, BSM, Sarah Long serving. Here's Lee, setting it for on Erickson, the cross dug up by Carr. Ball goes to Jackson. Lee pushing it across and slides it off the blockers and down. Again, good athletic play by Lee there. Um, you know, that they, they expect her to, to kind of make these command decisions when the ball is tight like that and she sees an opening. Go ahead and be, be a good athlete and attack the ball in second contact. That's into the net. Service there by Newman. It's talking about 0-2 in, 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 in the section uh, uh, section two uh, the other day. Shakopee was up 2-0 on Eden Prairie in the in the semi, and Eden Prairie came roaring back to, to win three in a row. This one, or a long set across. Erickson's hit dug up. Here's half the way, and that gets blocked. This is a great job of setting and closing the lock bear by, ha uh, by Hopkins. Hathaway has a, a very hittable set here. Unfortunately, okay, Lee's got her hands across right in the avenue she chose to hit. Well, how good has she been this afternoon? Uh, <laughs> she <laughs> serves one into the net. Uh, I, I, I will say this. is, is, is I, I would have Tara Lee on my volleyball team every single time. I mean, she's a fantastic volleyball player, fantastic leader. Carr serving right at Lee. Newman got to that ball and able to push it across. Here's Hathaway, and that's off the plat. Point finilled. Apologies to the young lady that, that plays uh, setter at Minnetonka High School right now. I wouldn't trade Dresden Pass for, for a player if he had a gun to my head. I mean, she did such a fantastic job for us. Speaking globally, though, that Tara Lee is the exact kind of player that, that, that you want on your volleyball team. Lee runs to this ball, over by Nelson, Carr, Hathaway to it, and over by Carr. Lee, set back outside, and they call double contact again on Lee. Well, the, the announcer's jinx is a real yes, thing, it's, apparently. It's, we're on a roll. Early timeout by Hopkins here, Vicky uh, choosing to use one early. And I think the message here from, from, from a coach's standpoint would be, hey, you've had a fantastic game one, a fantastic game two. That doesn't mean you've won anything yet. Okay, you just get refocused. And the worst thing you can do right now is as a Hopkins Royal, the worst thing you can do is get, give Benil hope. Um, hope is, is, is something that you do not want to give them right now. And yeah, I mean, Vicky is being very, very, very clear in her instruction to the kids right now. You have not won a thing because he won the first two sets. Let's buckle down. Let's get back to being the team we were in game one and game two. Well, I saw this two nights ago in with Champlain Park. They went up two sets to none. I don't know if they relaxed, but at the beginning of that set, third set, St. Michael got four points right off the bat. Now, it ended up being a close set, but Champlain never quite made up that, that four-point early deficit. St. Michael won that one. They won the fourth one before Champlain rallied to prevail in the fifth set. So it can happen. I'm not sure that's exactly the message. Yeah, how do teams ever come back from 0-2? I mean, it, it happens, not frequently, but it does happen, and that's how it starts, is you give the other team a sliver of hope by, by you know, playing poorly when, when you've played at a level here in both games one and game two. See if the Red Knights can keep this going, leading five to two. Lee, way up in the air, and over by Erickson. Long to the middle of the favor, off Newman. Another great scramble, but nothing they could do that time. Yeah, but played once, not twice. Benilde certainly in control right now as, as Hopkins is, is, you know, not in their offense. They're, they're basically running down balls to, to, you know, play free balls to Benilde. Benilde's taking advantage of that right now. They have a tremendous amount of, of leverage right now on the Benilde side. Carr serves. Back row Newman. Lee outside to Nelson. And Hopkins gets a key point. It's one of those key blocking errors is, is you, you, you don't get your shoulders and feet and hands turned back to zone six. 6-3 six with Erickson serving. Long for Faber. Got it down. Boy, Long has been on fire right now. She had a, a big kill at the end of uh, game two to, to kind of give her team a shot in the arm. She's, she's two for two in this match right now. 
Um, it, uh, again, you know, the referees, it, it, that's something you can't control if you're either Hopkins or Benilde. You just got to go out and play your best. Sherson, great serve for an ace. Eight three, Benilde. Lee will push it to back row. Jackson that's going to run that one down. Is over by Carr. Nelson to Lee. Outside class floats it across. Long to half the way, gets blocked back up in the air. It's left to be over by Jackson and is for a point. Really like that Jackson chose to be aggressive there. It's not a, 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 a normal set that she gets. Um, you know, basically kind of standing flat foot in the back row. Chose to be aggressive, it paid off there. Sherson, good serve to start this point. Over by class, here's Long, half away. Way to the middle to Erickson. As much pressure as Benilde can apply with Erickson in the back row, I mean, I, I feel like that's kind of been their, their formula to success in, in game one and game two. It's a great shot by Erickson playing out of the back row right now. Just hitting high hands on, on, a, on a set in the white. Erickson with 417 kills on the season, and here's an ace here. Probably the same serving strategy for Hopkins right now is let's go after Jackson. Let's force her to, to expend as much energy as we can. Pulled back to within four. Here's Hathaway. Lee over by Nelson. Couldn't get that one to crawl across. That's a tough set to handle there. Um, you know, just set was mishandled a little bit. Um, you know, it puts, a, it puts a hitter in a really tough position. Um, you know, one more time, all the momentum to Benilde right now, and I feel like Benilde is, is not playing very uh, error-prone volleyball. Hopkins had a couple missteps. Lee for Nelson, and Jackson's there to block it back. There, Jackson shows off her athleticism. Like, my goodness, are her arms almost 90 degrees at the peak of her block jump here. That's, that's nuts. Six-point BSM lead now at 11 to five. Middle, Erickson, that's off the ceiling, and the Red Knights able to play it off the carom. Nelson attacks, but he'll really scramble him to get it over. Card in the back row. Lee back set for Nelson, over, tipped over again. Carr long, trying to put it across, tut block that. Jackson's attack, dug up by Newman. Here's Lee dumping it. Carr's ready for that ball. Here's Jackson, another big swing. Erickson to the front row, Lee tight to the net, class can't get it over, what a point. Couple big plays in that rally, one Sarah Long, the setter, um, making an unbelievable push back to the, to the center of court for a ball that looked like it, it might be hopeless. The other play that I, I, I've been talking about this for the entire match, but I really like Anna Carr has taken that, that uh, responsibility very seriously of, of trying to do everything they can to not allow Tara Lee to, to be successful on an attack on two. I just feel like that's part of Hopkins' game plan. That's part of what makes them a great team is they always have three attackers in the front row. I, I'd say that Anna Carr has cleaned up everything that she could. Tara's made a couple fantastic plays where I wouldn't expect any defender to be able to handle, but everything easy medium. I mean, Anna Carr has made the play, and I just feel like she's doing an unbelievable job. Uh, and I, I got to credit the, the coaching staff for Benilde a little bit, too, is, is, is they, they have made that a point of emphasis. And, and I, I feel like it's just paying off big time right now. Like the body language shift for Benilde right now, just kind of looking at them, you know, in, in the shot we had there. Smiles, you know, body language that doesn't suggest, okay, that, that things are going poorly for us right now. And obviously they're not. It's it's easy to, to have that body language and, and that attitude when everything's are going well. I, I would really like to see Benilde, there's going to be some ups and downs, ebbs and flows. When things aren't going our way, uh, I would like to see them kind of return to that, that body language where, you know what, okay, it, it, it's going to be all right. We're just going to play our game. We're not going to allow any outside influences to get us out of what's got us here, basically. 12 to 5 with Dobo serving. Lee to Shadir Tut. 
Well, Shadir Todd has come up huge in, in, in a couple key situations for Hopkins. Uh, I like Tara Lead, you know, analyzing that, you know, let's use her right here. I feel like she is a, she's an advantage. Long setting Jackson. Big bang for, for uh, you know, the outside hitter right there for Benilde, and Erickson's in good digging position. Unfortunately, she just swivels her platform, which causes the mishandle out of bounds. Thirteen six so Fox serving. Leal dumped it over. Sherson played that well. Here's Jackson. Big plays of the net. Here's Jackson gets blocked by Lee. Long trying to tip it over and can't. Yeah, Long didn't have a lot of great options there. That that ball came quick and tight, and and she just tried to be a good athlete and and, and jump up and make a play. Uh, unfortunately, she's going to have to contact that ball in a perfect position to, to get it down aggressively in the manner she chose. 13-7 with class serving. Long to Booth. Wow. And what can you say? They, they freed up Booth on, on the 31. That route is designed to go away from the setter, about one body length. What a great swing there in the one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, Booth is having a fantastic game. Let's see if maybe Benil features her a little bit more as we progress. Seven-point lead. Long serving back row off of Nelson. Yeah, Hopkins, you know, has certainly self-inflicted some of this damage here. And, it, you know, people are going to make, make mistakes in volleyball matches. That's part of the game. It's, it's how do you do you right the ship after you make a mistake that, that it really kind of defines the, the, the character of the team. And maybe you don't get out of it in this game. And we set and set four. Now a nine-point deficit. Another... Yep. First contact there and an ace for long. Body language again. I mean, Hopkins, you know, they, they, you know, and granted, things aren't going well for them. It's really easy to, to kind of get withdrawn, get within a shell. I'd like to see them start communicating a little bit more and kind of, you know, being more intentional with their body language. We're head 2-0 for crying out loud, you know, where there's no reason to get down. Sidonia Rue in for the first time in the match for Hopkins. And Erickson gets one back. So I'll explain a rule here. Erickson didn't make contact with the net. The ball was already down before she actually made contact with the net. Coach Fong Long is, is questioning the down ref about it. Erickson hits with such authority. The ball is down before she makes contact with the net. It's a completely legal play. It's Booth. Harder Booth. Couple of Big swings again here in set three. Wow, and you, you talk about a ball being hit so well that the defender doesn't have any reaction time to get her hands up there. Minnetonka High School, we call that the face melter. It's the face melter. 17-8, <laughs> big kill by the 6-7 eighth grader. Here's Jackson serve. Lee, on her to cross, I don't think intentionally, she was trying to set that ball for Erickson. It goes on the other side of the net and Hopkins gets the point. How athletic is Erickson reaching across the net with one arm there to, to stop that attack? Um, that was a, a really, really good play. Lee serves. Handled by Carr along the booth again. Nice one returned by Newman on a good dig. On Halfway will float it across. Back to Nelson it goes. Up in the air, too tight to the net. Point Hopkins. Yeah, Booth is plenty hot right now. I, I would certainly make it a point of emphasis to get her the ball as much as we can right now. Um, you know, she's basically been unstoppable in, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Well, can the Royals make a run here in set three? Half the way. The point for the Royals is 17-11. I like the idea there by Hathaway is trading a little pace for location, trying to get that ball in deep zone five by the line judge. Just a little bit of a miscontact. Lee serves long, and BSM gets the point, 18-11. This is the rotation where Benilde has, has maybe had a struggle or two, is, is when both Booth and Jackson are on the bench. Let's see if, if, if the, the, the players in the front row right now can step up and, and rotate the team and, and keep the line moving. Jane Nelson gets the ball back. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. It's Gill for the senior. Tough thing to do to come off cold off the bench like that. You know, she's playing three rotations and, and you know, just basically keep yourself warm. I feel like yeah, that was an excellent swing for, you know, basically not having a lot of chances tonight. Long to the middle, and the attack from Favor. And a middle attack and kill for the Red Knights. Sky of Favor has been really sneaky effective today. Um, good swing there in one-on-one. -on -one. She's been favoring that, 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 that pull shot to the, to the left side, and she's been really, really successful with it. Sherson serves. Handled back row by Clatchers. Lead Erickson. Half away. Dug up by Erickson, lead a class, up by Scherson. Back from the middle, Jackson, played back row by Lee. Class floats it over this time. Set goes to Hathaway, and missed long, it's 19-13. See if Benil can do a great job on first contact. Maybe run middle here if they can. And, and what that'll do is two things. One, it'll score for them. And then, and then the other thing is they'll get Jackson back in the front row. The middle. Benil gets it right back. So they're happy to trade points right now. Absolutely. They need five more to win as Favor gets another kill. Absolutely. Sky of Favor has her heart ahead on the night. I mean, she is doing a tremendous job. You know, keeping Benil rotating, uh, and she's done a, a great, great uh, thing with her opportunity tonight. Shadir Tut gets the kill. That's tough to stop. I mean, she's up there so high, and he, as a blocker and defender, you just got to do your best on it. Wow, is that some elevation. Nelson, good serve, good dig by Carr. Back set, and this time. Favor missed long, and it's a point for Hopkins. I think her, her mouth started watering a little bit too much. She had yeah. a one on zero opportunity <laughs> there. Oh, okay, so here we have an out of rotation call on Benil St. Margaret's, and the issue is in serving order, if 13 serves before 22, then, then 22 needs to be closer to the sideline than, than, than 13. They got caught out of rotation there. Now why that doubly hurts is not only did they get caught out of rotation, but Hopkins missed their serve deep, so it's kind of a double whammy. So they're at 21 now. Lee gets blocked. Jackson and Booth were there for Benild. It's good awareness by Jackson and Booth is, is understanding that even though Lee is the setter, they do have three attackers in the front row right now. Uh, let's, let's snuff out that opportunity for, for Lee to hurt us. Fox serves. Newman leads. Shadir Tut pushed across by Booth. Lee can't quite find a spot. And a 23-16. We noticed the Libros out of the game. Anna Carr has been doing a great job containing Lee. Libros out of the game right now. Lee figures, well, you know what? Maybe with her out of the game, I can I can hit some more placement shots. The right idea. She missed it by basically the width of a ball. Long will set it to Carter Booth. Outside, tight to net. Class trying to get it over. Lee Erickson, back row, long, quick set, dumped over by Carter Booth, Newman to the floor, and a couple of good plays by Hopkins to dig that ball up. Lee, another one here. Class back to Erickson. Long to Booth, big swing. Nelson plays it. Unless we had a Hopkins player in or maybe it was under the net, severe cut, and a point for Benel, the now set point Red Knights. Net violation, uh, Tara Lee got the net on the way down with her midsection. Great rally by both teams there. Let's see if uh, Benel can close it out. Left side class, Erickson. The Macy Jackson. Lee gets block at the net. Hand on, we got a violation and lift call by Benil. It's a correct call. Carter Booth 
came underneath the volleyball. And now Bonilla's claiming she had a closed fist. Even if she does have a closed fist, if the ball makes prolonged contact with any surface of a player, it, it's still deemed to be a lift. Long for Booth. He can get much on it, but enough to get it over. Here's Erickson's attack, dug up by Scherzen. Over by Carr. They're going back to Erickson. Watch but out of play. Match point here. Hopefully, Benil can run off of the middle right now. So they have the great ball control. They've established Booth. My hope is, is, is Long decides to run a combination play where they get the ball to Jackson quickly to the pin. Overpass hammered by Erickson. Scherson back to the front row and over by Jackson. Here's Lee dumps it down. Oh, Hopkins hangs in there, 24-19. Great play by, by Lee there, very athletic. Hard to ask a defender to, to contain that. Class serves. Long for Booth. Over, and there is set point. Well, it pays to be 6-7, and you know, Booth, even on a miss hit right there, made good enough contact. The ball was able to find open floor undefended. Um, you know, a couple of key adjustments. One, Benilde has done a great job in first contact. You see right here, Libra does a great job in poise in receiving that first ball. They've allowed Booth to become a factor in the game because they've done a great job handling the ball. And then I would say even, even a second level adjustment, if Benilde can continue to handle the first ball like that, is to play off of the middles a little bit, is to get the block to commit. Hopefully Hopkins makes a, 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 an adjustment on the blocking assignment versus the middle, and then that will free up Jackson and and the outsides a little bit more. Red Knights still have life. Take another timeout for Section 6 Volleyball from Cooper High School after this. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. John Jacobson along with Minnetonka, head volleyball coach Carl Katzenberger. We are at Cooper High School on this Saturday afternoon for the Section 6-3A championship. Hopkins Royals up on Benilde St. Margaret's. Two sets to one. Benilde really played well. Hopkins a little bit off that game, off their game in that third set. And Red Knights taking advantage on both accounts and they keep the match alive. I mean, in totality, I think Benilde has proved two things. One is that they belong in the section final. They're, they're at the level of, of, of a program like Hopkins. And two is, in, in extended periods of, of time, Benilde has actually outplayed Hopkins. Uh, and in total points won, Benilde actually has the four-point edge right now. Um, the unfortunate part for Benilde fans is, is Hopkins, uh, I believe, outplayed Benilde in crunch time at the 23-plus mark in both game one and game two. And that's the reason why they lead the match two to, or two to one right now. For Hopkins, you just 
you wipe the, the deck clean, you know, and it's, you start fresh here in set four. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a mentality of, hey, listen, I mean, you, you guys got to you guys gotta play as hungry and as focused as you did in, in, in game one and game two, and let's not give Benilde hope. Let's not give them a, 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 a ray of sunshine. Well, there's one right off the bat. There's a for Hopkins in their favor, the service there. And yeah, maybe that's something we look at too, is the team that, that does the least self-inflicted damage is probably gonna have the advantage in game four. His class serving. Ball in the middle of the booth. My goodness, I, I don't know how you contain that. Now, let's take it this into play right now too. She's, she's in eighth grade, and, and I believe she's still 13 years old. Like, holy cow, this physical at that young of an age, um, with four more years of high school volleyball eligibility. Uh, a lot to like if you're a Benilde fan there. Tied up at one. Here's Lee outside Erickson. The big attack. Yeah, that's a pick your poison situation. And, and again, maybe that's a little bit of the eighth grade inexperience. The, the ball goes in system to Lee. Booth follows the middle uh, on a short route, which leaves Erickson basically one on one or one on none. Long outside, Jackson gets blocked. Lee and Nia Kim cut for the block. Tara Lee's fired up right now. She's doing everything she can to kind of ignite her team. Great play there. She's, she's trying to be a vocal leader as well as a leader by example. This is off of Jackson. Oh, Jackson can't get on top of that ball. And so Tompkins is set out to a quick lead. Much like Benilde was in set three, 4-1 Royals. Yeah, let's see if Benilde can kind of right the ship here. Um, let's watch body language on both teams too. I really like the body language of Hopkins right now. Let's see if Benilde can return to, to that, that point where you know everything was just going swimmingly, smiles on our faces, uh, you know, really bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Another ace for Katie Newman in the timeout for Benilde, and it's 5-1 Royals. It's a good time out right now, and here, here's some, this, this replay will show some symptomatic issues, is is the hustle to the ball is kind of one of the big things we look for as coaches, like, hey guys, are, are you committed to playing your absolute best, or are you kind of playing passively and hoping that your teammates will do the heavy lifting for you right now? And that, that's that's all sports, not just volleyball, is, is, is you want to tell kids, and especially in a, in a situation where things could get tight, like, let's go ahead and be the kid that makes a play and takes the pressure off of our teammates instead of of waiting around and hoping that, that a teammate will do something great to take the pressure off of me. And, and I think that, that if kids can learn that lesson at an early age, it, that manifests itself in so many positive ways on the volleyball court. Your team played in section two, Carl. I know you were eliminated by Fire Lake. That section final tonight, Saturday. Yeah, and you know, in our side of the semifinal, it was very similar to the first two games of this match, Minnetonka Fire Lake. Both games went to 23-23. Unfortunately, Minnetonka forgot to win either of the first two games. Prior Lake is just one heck of a volleyball team. Hats off to them. They they, they deserve to advance. And then Shakopee had Eden Prairie down 2-0. Eden Prairie comes roaring back to win 3-0. Uh, Grace Pearson, kind of the, the heart and soul of that Eden Prairie team, she took 85 attack attempts in, in that five game match. 85. Should be a great section final tonight. Back in play here, it's 5 1. Hopkins leading. Jackson can't get it across on her attack. Hopkins has made the decision that, that Jackson is not going to beat them this game. They, they, have, they have basically committed both the middle and the right side blocker to, to Jackson, and they're going to force Benil to beat them with someone else. Long back to Booth. Sent right back to the BSM side. Here's Carr, will float it back row. He'll set up on Erickson for the kill. 7-1 Royals. A lot of credit to the Hopkins coaching staff. It, it looks very much like they, they got the team calmed down right now um, and just decided, hey, we're going to play our game. And whatever Benil does, Benil does. But we're going to play Hopkins volleyball right now. Uh, pushed across. A great effort by Dobos to keep that one alive. There's Erickson again. Here it comes to Jackson. 
Good point for Benil Maisie Jackson. Great shot, she's so deceptive. Numbers facing the line shot right here, and then she gets that thumb on the inside of the ball to cut it back last minute cross court. So deceptive hitting that ball. Seven to two with Jackson serving. Lee runs this one down to Erickson. Carr ready for him, long. He'll set it outside for Hathaway. Hathaway's been a little bit quiet, and you know, it's something certainly out of her control. The, the, the location maybe of her, of her attack attempts haven't been perfect. Like, let's really, really uh, see if she can turn it on here in game four. That'd be fantastic for Beno. Lee outside to Erickson. On Erickson, got that one down. Well, she has done a ton of damage in, in her rotation to the front row. The good news for Benilde is, is that they rotate her to the back row in, in, with, with one more side out and, and one more point lost. But scrambling play by Benilde to get to that ball. Now they go to Nelson for the attack. Carr gets hands on it and puts this one across. Lee of the back to Anna Erickson. They like that play. Yeah, Working I mean, for him, Carl. quick to the pin with Erickson is, is incredibly hard to defend. Um, you just, you, as a blocker, you, you, you have to pick your poison, and, and, and she, she's just so dynamic, it's, it's hard to stop. Lee serves Jackson up in the air. Jackson's attack from the middle. Lee, good job to get to that ball. There's Erickson again. This time gets blocked. Left called on Hopkins and a point for Benil. Yeah, Lee was just trying to be aggressive, uh, play the first contact. Uh, unfortunately, she, she had her hand open and the, and the ball you know, made prolonged contact with, with her palm. It's an easy call for the referee. 9-4, Benil trailing with Fox serving. There's Nelson. What a, what a shame there. Benilde had a, a great combination block, had, had four hands up, and just didn't get their hands and body turned back towards zone one, causing the deflection out of bounds. Brooks in favor, unable to keep that ball in play. Served back to Erickson and the Royals, the lead by six. This will be an ace for Erickson. Their biggest lead now of the set and the match at 11 to four. This is a critical time for Benilde right now. It's, 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 you gotta have some belief in who you are and belief in your team, belief in your teammates. Uh, let's see if they can rally here down seven points early. Good set for Faber gets on top of that ball. Wow, Faber has been really effective. I mean, you know, we didn't talk about her a lot coming into the match. And, you know, I talked to the, the Benilde coaches ahead of the match, though, and they said, you know, we are not afraid to, to get Faber the ball in, in, in big moments for us. And, and she's really rewarded her teammates and her coaches with, with great play today. Lead to this ball and over by Nelson. Well, wow, and that's a good aggressive play by Nelson. Let's talk about Lee running this ricochet down. There's not very many uh, setters in the state that are athletic to not only touch the ball, but make it hittable for, for their hitter there. That's just, it's an outstanding play. Laid back to seven again for the Royals. That close serve and a good one and an ace. This and might be a good time. Five. This might be a good time for a timeout here for, for Fong Long and try to get his troops calmed down. The best thing that Benil could do right now is ignore the scoreboard and, and just play their very best volleyball and, and see what that does it for them. Look at the body language right now for Benil too. Is, is, it's so different than it was in, in, in moments in game one, two, and three. And, you know, if we, could, if we could return them, you know, wave a magic wand and return them to that positive uh, body language, you know, it'd be interesting to see what effect that would have on their volleyball. 13 to 5 Royals. So if you're the team that's ahead, you're up by eight in the fourth set, and you're, you're Ricky Swenson. How do you keep your girls engaged? That eh, they can take a point or two off and it's go get the 25. You yeah. know, it's, it's critical. You know, for us as, as as coaches, to remind the kids to ignore the circumstance. You had a great first half of this game. If you're Hopkins, you need to have a great second half because a great first half doesn't win a, win a game. So I'm sure, Vicky is telling, okay, guys, pedal the metal right now. Let's give Benilde a, a chance to kind of quit, give up on the match. Whereas Benilde is is hey, we're going to make some plays and we got to find a ray of sunshine right here and, and we got to get energized. So. So 
Set to favor. Lee to Erickson from the middle. Boy, I'd say that that Erickson and Lee have been as good as advertised, and you know, in, in in a deciding game four here, um, you know, they have been they have been absolutely pivotal to, to Hopkins' success. This serve is long, and it goes to Benil at 14-6. All right, Benilde has rotated Jackson back to the front row. Let's see if they can chip away a little bit. We, we don't need all eight points back immediately on the service run, but it, it'd be nice to get a couple here, especially considering Erickson is still in the back row for Hopkins. Double serves, handled by Newman. In the middle, Shadir Tut gets the kill. Shadir Tut has been sneaky effective today, too. Is I, I don't know how many swings she's had, but I, I would imagine she's had basically zero errors and a ton of success. 15-6 is Nelson, line drive serve off of Carr for an ace. Well, I don't know what got said in that, that, that break between game three and game four, but Hopkins looks razor sharp right now, very focused, very aggressive. Long outside, Jackson. Cross handled by Newman, Lee will set it over by class. Good dig by Scherson on the ball, but Red Knight still unable to get the ball over. And now Hopkins within eight points of another trip to state. Nelson serves. Long to Jackson. Back row handled by Erickson. Lee will dump it back row. Across but out. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes you can game plan, you can do everything correctly. There, there Benilde sniffed out that setter dump. It was just put in, in, in such a good place by Tara Lee. Made it very, very hard to run down and defend. Um, it, one thing, it, it's one thing to get beat, get outplayed by another team, and it, it's another another thing to kind of, you know, get in your own way. But I, I just feel like it's a combination of Benilde's standard has dropped a little bit, and, and Hopkins has absolutely turned it up. Serve long by Nelson. And a little momentum break, perhaps for Benil, but they got a long way to go here. Long, and there's Tut in the middle of the block back that ball. Tut does a great job of fronting Booth. As a middle, you're taught to never lose sight of your, your opposing middle. It's critical that you stay in front of her at all times. Get those hands across. Really, really well played. Class serves. Long for Jackson. Lee. And Tuck got up for the block, but Jackson getting it in play. Yeah, Jackson made lemonade there. That, that ball was, was set a little bit tight, and um, she, she basically, the only course that action she had is to just try to go off hands out of bounds. She was, she was successful. Carter Booth back in. Lee sets for Erickson. And out of play. Off of Gobos. Well, if you're a Hopkins fan, you, you can smell it right now. Um, it's a fantastic position they're in. They, they get a score of five points to, to, to close the deal. Um, you know, been impressed at times by both teams. Just really impressed by the, the, the uh, you know, attention to detail by Hopkins in, in game four here. Jackson, big swing in the kill. 20 to nine. Jackson at her best when she's aggressive. Another great aggressive swing here. Um, you know, fantastic job of finding the seam. Serve long by Jackson. 21 9 Hopkins. Tara Lee, the senior. Service error gives Benil the break. There's a ton to like for Benil going forward. Even if they're unsuccessful in winning this game for, it, they, they graduate four players. Now, a couple really valuable volleyball players, and, and, and it looks like you know some captains here in a position of leadership, but they, they're a relatively young roster, and you know, they should be very relevant for, for quite some time to come. Faber gets the block on Nelson's hit. Really like the way that Skya Faber has played today. I, I, I also like the way that Sarah Long has played today at the center position for Benil. I, I thought she's made some very athletic and difficult plays. 21-11, good serve by Fox. And then 
Those are the ace for the Red Knights. This is something that Hopkins didn't display in the first part of this game. It, it almost looks nonchalant right now in their, their, their turn to play the volleyball. I'd like to return them and get them a little bit more focused. Lead Erickson, that gets blocked back. 21-13. Well, well, well. We have a we have a run happening right now by by Benilde. And you know, like I said, I, I think the focus has definitely changed from Hopkins to win as many points as we can to hey, you know what? We're, we're four points away from going to state. And you, you can tell kind of in the results right now that they're not as single-minded as they were earlier in, in the in the game. An eleven point lead down to eight. Vicky Swenson calling timeout. It's a good timeout by Vicky Swenson right now, and, and it's, it's to reestablish some control o over, you know, what's going on in the match, and, and not control by the coaches. It's, it's incumbent of the kids right now is to take control of the situation. And the kids are the ones out there making plays, and it's the coach's job to get them ready during practice and things like that, but but it's it's really important for the kids to take the responsibility. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be a leader right now, and a leader by example. I'm going to go make a difficult play. I'm going to go make a great play, or I'm just going to make a simple play, and, but I'm going to do it for, for the benefit of my team. I'm not going to wait around for somebody else to do the heavy lifting. I'm going to go out there and, and just really do my best to make a play for the team. Always fun, though, on section final day, isn't it? Uh, it's, this, is, this is fantastic, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, like this is this is a goal that, that every kid in the state of Minnesota and every coach in the state of Minnesota has when, when you open those those tryouts out in, in mid-August. This is, this is the goal for everybody. Out of the timeout, they go to Nelson. Didn't get a great hit on that ball, but got it over the block. Halfway attacks. Newman got a hand on it, but it's down for another BSM point. Like Hathaway's aggressiveness there. Again, trading a little pace for location, getting that ball into deep zone five. 21-14 with Fox serving. And this will go out. Well, we get a ball game again here, John. Um, no doubt. I, boy, I, I can't say enough about the, the ability for Benil to just quit at any point in this game. There are multiple opportunities for them to roll over and quit, and you know, they, they are not going quietly. Well, good serve. And another race. That was better than the last serve. Yeah, and, and you know what? They, 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 are, they are really being intentional about, about where this ball is being served. They're, they're really going after the, the middle of the court right now, trying to attack that area. It's time it'll be Nelson on first contact. It goes to Erickson, gets blocked. Lead back to the middle over by Klaas. Long setting half the way long. Touch, on touch the block on the, the line judge here is calling it block touch. First referee sees it. Huge swing. 21-17 right now. Benilde's re-energized. Vicky Swenson kind of questioning, you know, the, whether the call. Um, was made off the block or off a digger. She's just trying to figure out exactly which player was identified as touching the volleyball. It had to have been the block. Let's see right here. High hand shot. It looks like that that uh, Tut's fingers may have flexed back a little bit at the point of contact. I mean, I, I think that that's a good call by, by the line judge and, and a good call by the referee. So. 21-17, how about that? Seven in a row here for Benil. Super impressed by Benil, super impressed. They, they had many opportunities just to roll over and quit at, at any juncture. And let's take one more look at this, this block play here. I would look at Tut's left hand. She goes up to block, maybe just a little bit of a flex right I there. Think, I think it's high. Well, that's the good thing is you and I have right. don't count. We don't read. <laughs> it's, it matters it's none. It's a tough job to be down there. And you know what? In, in such an important match, too, I mean, I, I can't say enough about, you know, that there's been a couple questionable calls, certainly. And we talked about the ball hitting the antenna, maybe that touch call. But, I mean, I think the refereeing has been superb. Candy Colbo has had a great handle on, on, on the match. 21-17. How far can the Red Knights come back here? Lee setting for Nelson, had to back up on that ball. Long will set it to half the way, off hands and down, another Red Knight point. It's 21-18, neither team with timeout left now, so 
They've ball in the players' hands from here. They've moved Erickson back to the left side here. They're going to get her the ball basically with, without condition right here. Erickson's going to pass this first one and, and watch for a swing. Does get to the back row. Jackson up in the air long. Halfway attacks. Lee swing for Erickson. Dug up by Jackson. Halfway again. Throws it in for a point. This is nothing short of amazing at this point. Benil has figured out a way to regain their composure. They are clearly the aggressor. Um, you know, what a great finesse shot here by Hathaway. Uh, again, Hopkins has altered their serve receive pattern. Erickson's back on the left side. The ball is going here unconditionally. Let's see if Erickson can keep the line moving. Fox serves, another good serve. Go to Erickson over. Long, Jackson, Hathaway, one hand on it. Lee back set Nelson across and out. Wow, great shot right there by Hopkins. Just crawling out. I would say that that Nelson did the right thing. She stayed aggressive, got a good set, and, and tried to go for it. That, that's an important concept in crunch time here. Yeah, it's definitely out. Lee to Erickson. How big is that point for Hopkins? 10-0 run for Benilde finally ended with that attack. What a remarkable run. And, and now Benilde has this set up in basically best case scenarios. They got Erickson in the back row and they need to outplay them down the stretch here. 10-0 run pretty much unheard of when you get to a section final. It's nothing short of astounding. That's, that's a great service run there by Benilde. The Royals still in the lead and trying to get point 23 here, and they do. Be a shame for Benil to put that much effort into a comeback and, and then kind of have the wheels come off for lack of composure right now. Anna Erickson. Now Terry Lee coming over. Conversation at the net and 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 the captain for Benil or captain for for Hopkins is is questioning Bill Neal's serve receive pattern right here. They think they're they're out of rotation. Long to the middle. Oh, Faber couldn't get enough on that ball, and now it is set and match point for Hopkins. Faber's been so aggressive over the night, and and there she decided to go with finesse, and you know would really like to see her take an aggressive swing. Faber got it over. Great dig up by Nelson, but the point goes to Benil. Okay. Red Knights stay alive. You know, this is this is a really, really tremendous effort. Let's see if Benil can put a run together right now. It all starts with the server. It looks like Sherson is going to be asked to serve. I would expect her to, to put that ball in the middle of the court right now, be as least error prone as possible. Nice to go for the side, misses, and Hopkins wins the section for a third season. What a fantastic effort by both teams and, and you know what Hopkins certainly uh, outplayed Benil to the extent of the front end where it made it nearly impossible for them to come back. Benil to their credit had multiple chances to quit on the match and, and they, they showed a ton of character by clawing their way even in that match and then Hopkins at the end you know basically they, they, they did not make errors they did not get in their own way. Uh, I would imagine that Benil would like to have that that ending back but you know hats off to both schools like what, what a really really well played match congratulations to Hopkins for, for representing the six the section at, at the state tournament well and how about that effort by Benil when they're down 21 10 there in the fourth set yes they ended up losing but to get a 10 0 run and to take a, a set of this was incredible I thought it shows a ton of guts a ton of guts and, and that, that's the hallmark of, of, of a bunch of kids that are playing as a team they, they kind of made a decision hey you know what I may have done something silly at the beginning of this game I may have had an opportunity that I wish I had back it, it doesn't matter I, I need to, to, to plug in and, and rally for my team my teammates are of the utmost importance to me right now and you know I, I think that came through in the way they played um, you know what, what an outstanding run to, to pull that game near even and Hopkins you know what what can you say is, is, is they, they, they just basically made the plays at crunch time in game one game two and game four and you know I think they're very deserving of, of the win today based on their play at the end game. 
Congratulations to Benilde on a great season. Red Knights finished 26 and four, and uh, they could be back in this position in years to to come. And Hopkins, their experience pays off in the end, 23 and seven, and onto the state tournament for a third straight year out of Section Six. I, I think it's a great way to put it. And, it, and as happy as I am for the Hopkins kids, you, you, you really feel for Benilde right now. This is kind of their their first go at it in in this big of a moment. And like I said, they they do lose four seniors who are important to, to their success. Success, but the, the rest of the roster is littered with with juniors, sophomores, uh, that one sorry two ninth graders, okay, and, and an eighth grader, and and those ninth graders and eighth grader are playing prominent roles for them right now. There, there's a ton to like. You look ahead to the state tournament next week. What do you like? I mean, I know all the section finals aren't aren't done yet, but from the teams that are in. Yeah, it's it's, e it's Egan's tournament to lose, in my opinion, and 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 Kathy Gillen. Um, you know, there's an interesting piece in, in, a, in a media outlet the other day is, is the, the Egan athletic director made the statement that I, I sure would like it if when people refer to Kathy Gillen as the best female coach in the state of Minnesota, if they would just drop the female. Like no. Kathy Gillen is, is the best coach in the state of Minnesota. And, you know, in my own personal opinion, I, I, I can't find any flaw with that argument. Kathy Gillen does a tremendous job with the Egan program. And, you know, it, she, certainly a, a strong, strong case to be made for her being the best of all volleyball coach in the state of Minnesota over a prolonged period of time. Egan has, has been fantastic from top to bottom. I, I think, you know, one, one of the dark horses may be whoever comes out of, out of section two. And I, I think, uh, you know, Prior Lake and Eden Prairie both are going to have a puncher's chance. Um, I think Champlin Park is going to have a puncher's chance. And, you know, quite honestly, any team, they, they get hot at the right moment. Hopkins, you know, for example, if, if they get hot, there's anything going to happen in one match. And, you know, that, that's a, one of the other great things about the state tournament is that, you know, you, you can look on paper and find a favorite. You can look on paper and, and see a team that has the advantage maybe over the course of the season, head-to-head, -head, or common opponents. It doesn't matter. It's, it's who plays best that evening. We'll hang on just a few more moments now. We're close to the, the trophy presentation for, for Hopkins as the Red Knights will get their runner-up uh, trophy here now. And uh, it's always tough when you're in the moment when you're on the, the losing team. They'll look back and see what a great season they've had. But the, not much in consoling that, that group right at this moment. No, you're, you're right about that. But it is very important they get recognized for all the success they had. And, you know, this moment is bittersweet. I agree with that. You have been standing on that line and, you know, it, in the midst of a very emotional loss. It is really important, though, that they get recognized. And you can see Hopkins fans right now standing and applauding their effort in their season. Uh, r r really classy. And I, I just like the fact that they get their moment in the sun, too. Now for Hopkins, and now they're into the state tournament. What needs to, to improve for them at the state tournament from what you saw today? Yeah, they, they, they need to get off the roller coaster as, as they play so well, you know, at their peak and when everything is going well. And, and their valleys are so far away from their peaks. It's, 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 it's almost, you know, how is that possibly the same set of kids? If, if they can regulate that, and every team is going to have peaks and valleys. You can't expect a team to play perfectly for the duration of a match. They, they just need to tighten up the gap between their, their peaks and the valleys. I think that would be the number one thing that, that I would concentrate on in a team that talented but has that obvious of, of, of a situation happening right now. There's such a disparity between your best volleyball and your worst. Let's talk about Vicki Swenson in her 23rd season. Seventh state tournament appearance, so roughly one in three years over a, a sample of 23 seasons. First, how are you, you know, successful and, and, a, and a head coach at a prominent school like Hopkins for 23 seasons? Like that in its own is an unbelievable accomplishment. But then, you know, for all, all, all coaches out there, and I don't care if you're experienced or if you're a young aspiring coach, seven, seven chances at the state tournament. Like what an accomplishment. Just to win a section tournament alone, you know, especially some of the things they've had to go on through back in, back in the old section six where it was Hopkins, Minnetonka, uh, Wyzetta, Eden Prairie, all, you know, the late conference schools and, and those those loaded rosters in the, in the early two th 2010s. You know, I, I, I just, I can't believe that they've been, you know, that good for that long. And I've known Vicky forever. And it, it's just that 23 seasons and that seven state tournament appearances now, when I'm actually looking at it on paper, like I, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Like what an accomplishment for, for Vicky and, and all of her efforts in helping the kids, you know, at Hopkins High School kind of achieve their very best in, in volleyball. 
And as the Hopkins Royals come forward and receive their championship trophy, we'll put a wrap on our telecast this afternoon. Carl, great to see you again. Thanks for your work on, on the match. Thanks for, for having me. Appreciate it. Carl Katzenberger and all of our great crew this afternoon at Cooper. Congratulations to the Hopkins Royals. They're your 2017 Section 6-3A champions. I'm John Jacobson. Thanks for tuning in and so long from Cooper High School.